On the 10th of October 2018, the UK Supreme Court ruled unanimously that Ashes Baking Company had not broken the law when it turned down an order for a same-sex marriage campaign cake because it conflicted with the owner's Christian belief that marriage is between a man and a woman. What came to be known as the Gay Cake case made headlines around the world. People of all faiths and none watched as the MacArthur family who own and run Ashes were pursued through the courts by the Equality Commission for Northern Ireland as it accused them of unlawful discrimination. And they applauded when all five Supreme Court judges vindicated the family-run bakery. The couple that bore the focus of the media attention were Daniel and Amy MacArthur. Daniel is the son of Ash's owners, Colin and Karen, and also Ash's general manager. I visited Daniel and Amy at their home in County Antrim to catch up with the family and look back on their momentous victory. Daniel and Amy, it's uh been a while. In fact, I don't know if you're aware, but it's pretty much three years since we sat in that media room in London, uh, just after we received that wonderful unanimous Supreme Court verdict. I just wonder if you could uh, bring us up to date. Uh, how's the family? How's the business? Yeah, well, business has been good. It's been, uh, yeah, we've been working hard. Um, we have a few more kids uh, in the family as well. So, yeah, it's been uh, a pretty ordinary three years in it compared to the four years that went before it. Amy, it was a four-year process, and during that time you had Elia, Anne Blythe, Anne Lachlan. So you had a lot going on with the court and with family. How did you cope during that time? Um, yeah, I think uh, whenever we first found out we were going to court, Elia was just born. She was only a couple of days old, I think. Um, and I remember just reading the Psalms at those, those first couple of weeks uh, when everything just seemed so uncertain and they were just a real encouragement. But then obviously we had the Christian Institute as well, which was a, a load off our minds, just knowing that we had um, them at the end of the phone for any other legal things that we needed help with. The family sort of grew up, didn't they, across over, over the period of the court case? Yeah, they did. And, and uh, we could see you in the papers pregnant, yep. <laughs> extra child, uh, and what have you. Um, and the, the two things sort of went together, didn't they? Yeah. Um, you, you said at the time it was worth it. So looking back, would you say the same thing? Does that still hold true? Is it, is it still worth it? Yeah, I would say it was still very much worth it. Uh, I suppose three years later, we're still uh, seeing lessons that have that are coming out of it for us you know in, in every in everyday life trials where you can look back and see how god helped us through that so uh, he's going to give us grace to get through today we're not saying it was easy but was it good for us yeah it was good for us and can we see that god used it in our lives and in other people's lives yeah we can Obviously the case was huge. It made headlines all across the world in print and broadcast. When you first contacted the CI, could you ever have imagined just how big this case was going to become? No, I don't think. Never. <laughs> no, not, not quite the scale <laughs> that it did. No, at the start we knew it was legally a, a tricky topic. But we never thought the public would be interested. Uh, we never thought it would be, you know, the front page of newspapers, never mind on TV. No. For some people, that could put them off seeking help. Is there any encouragement that you could give them? I suppose you just have to do what you know to be right before God, and then God will bring you through the rest. Um, also, the only way that precedents are going to be set um, that can help other Christians is to really keep going um, and through the courts and that probably will get some media attention but it's worth it in the end if it can help other uh, believers who are facing similar challenges. The case has been variously described as seminal, historic, landmark, I don't know if you know but it's subsequently been cited by the Supreme Court itself, as well as a number of uh, academic journals. It stands as a significant precedent on the issue of uh, compelled speech. And the ruling has implications that go 
well beyond the facts of your case. I just wonder, over the course of the, those four years, to what extent was that in, in your mind as you chose to keep fighting? I think it was pretty high up there. Well, like, I, I don't think personal vindication really came into it. It was very much, um, we didn't really... Yeah, we got to a stage where it didn't really matter anymore whether we won, you know, or whether we uh, cleared our name as such. Uh, at, at that point, it was really, can we uh, win on some points here that will be helpful to other Christians? Uh, I started at the CI more or less the same time that, uh, that your case was starting off, so I've always felt quite tied to it. And uh, apart from the verdict itself, I think one of the highlights for me has to be the, the meeting at the waterfront uh, in Belfast back in 2015. Well over 2,000 people uh, packed in, uh, into that room um, with, on, with one issue, and there's was another 500 or so singing hymns outside. What do you remember of that night and are there any highlights of that for you? To be honest, that night is just a blur <laughs> in our minds. It's, uh, we vaguely remember sitting in a room beforehand and then you were sitting in the waterfront surrounded by 2,000 people and then I was up on the stage reading out something and yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing but um, it just was like, whew. The most surreal experience, yeah. A surreal experience, yeah. <laughs> do you remember having to go outside afterwards to sort of... Yes, I do. I remember running along a corridor, going up to the doors, and like a security guard, like, slightly opened the door, but he almost like he didn't want to let these people in. And then we said thank you to them. And, you know, there's so many people there who really wished us well and were obviously praying for us and yeah, yeah. Yeah. giving us their support. Coaches in the car park. Yeah, people that couldn't get in. It was incredibly encouraging, just knowing there were so many people praying for us and supporting us. It was great. One, one special moment for me was um, we prayed, in, in the, I don't know if you remember, we prayed in the room um, behind the main hall before we went out. And I remember, Daniel, your, your father Colin uh, saying to me just how touched he was by the fact that there were so many Christians of different denominations all come together under one roof in common cause. And I just wondered, do you see uh, any legacy for the church in Northern Ireland um, from, as a result of your case? I, I hope there is. I hope, you know, I hope we can work together. Like, I hope Christians can come together on like, these really serious issues that affect the whole of our society. Looking back, now, how would you sum up that time? Is there any, are there any particular highlights or just how would you, how would you sum it up? Um, highlights, I think just finding out the, the verdict was just one of the most incredible moments of my life. <laughs> just uh, the overwhelming majority and um, uh, it was just such an act of God that he had just done this and he's just working all things out for his purposes. Um, and it was, yeah, just to see that happen in your own life, it's, it's pretty amazing. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, there can be no doubt it was God's hand at work, and for us to be eyewitness to that firsthand is amazing. You know, I, like I, I, I sort of look at it and think, will that ever happen to us again in such an obvious way? Um, but another massive blessing and uh, was the amount of Christians that we got to meet uh, in Northern Ireland but also all over England, all over Scotland and in Wales. We were meeting people who'd been maybe praying for us yeah. for years mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah you just see God's kingdom on a wider level than what you're used to. How did the Institute help you and the family through those four years? I think the biggest help was just coping with the pressure and the publicity that seemed to come rapid fire mm -hmm. uh, from all directions. Just having the wisdom of how to handle it, uh, how to frame your words, what to say. You know, the, the pressure that took off us personally was 
probably the, the, the largest help to us, the thing that, that we really benefited from. Yeah, I said it before, it was really like a weight off our minds, just knowing that we had people on the end of the phone that we could contact if we were unsure about anything. And yeah, they became pretty much like family over those four, <laughs> four years. Because we always feel the great. same. <laughs>